Or did Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson act inappropriately when he contacted Goldman Sachs's former employer during the crisis last year? Now, that was the subject of an intriguing New York Times front page story yesterday, which found that Paulson spoke to Goldman's CEO, Lloyd Blankfein, 24 times in six days during the height of the financial crisis, more than any other bank executive at the other top firms. Now, one of the reporters who worked on that story is here to speak with us, Gretchen Morganson of the New York Times. And uh, Gretchen, great to have you with us. Thanks, buddy. Uh, very interesting. What I found actually the most interesting about your story was that actually Paulson was talking to Goldman even before he got the uh, got the ethical uh, ethic waivers, I guess you would call them, uh, and he'd been speaking to them even a year before that. Exactly. In fact, in um, August of 2007, which, as you remember, was really kind of the moment when things started to go awry and people started to recognize that the mortgage crisis was not going to be limited to subprime. We had an asset-backed commercial paper market really collapse. Um, he had a, a number of a very frequent uh, phone calls, some multiple times a day during that month. Uh, and I want to bring in Eric Schatzker, who's been following, of course, this story as well. And uh, uh, maybe, Gretchen, first explain to us, you know, what exactly are these waivers? I mean, how are they how are they put out by the you know how are they put out? And then Eric, you know, and, and we'll bring in Eric on this as well. Well, Secretary Paulson, when he became Treasury Secretary, according to his spokeswoman, understood that there were going to be questions about his, you know, long-term um, uh, employment at Goldman Sachs, and so he wanted to really kind of allay those fears that he might, you know, have a, a relationship. Even though he sold all of his holdings, sold mm -hmm. his stocks, sold his partnership holdings, he uh, wanted to kind of have a, a higher bar for himself. So he signed an agreement that would, um, you know, require him to get a waiver if there were any matters. Uh, Regarding Goldman Sachs, that he had to work on well, as what Treasury does that mean? Secretary. He could just speak freely about Goldman. Is that what it is then? Or well, what it meant was that if there were any matters that dealt with Goldman specifically, according to his lawyers, he would then have to go to them and say, "I need to have a waiver from this agreement that I struck when I came to Treasury." Okay, Gretchen. Clearly, these this is one of the perils of appointing somebody from Wall Street to a position like Treasury Secretary. You're banking on his ability to understand the situation much better, given his role in the case of Henry. Paulson and Goldman Sachs, but at the same time, uh, avoiding the appearance of conflict is so difficult, especially at a time like this. Based on your reporting, do you get the sense that at the very, very, very least, these ethical waivers should have been sought and granted before any of these conversations took place, or can we not know because we don't know exactly what they talked about? Well, we never will really know what they talked about unless, um, you know, we get them under oath to discuss what they discussed on the phone, and it's very hard to know. But I mm. would say, yes, that, you know, these waivers uh, seem to be made on the fly, as it were. And, you know, you, you really have to wonder if that was the best sort of approach to take with this. Now, even though the spokeswoman and Treasury lawyers said that you really didn't have a per se Goldman Sachs um, matter that the Treasury Secretary was dealing with prior to the time when he got the waiver. Well, you do have the AIG bailout, which of course uh, was a bailout of AIG's counterparties, the largest of which was Goldman Sachs. Why wouldn't you know what they talked about? I mean, he made those calls from the Treasury office, right? I mean, aren't those phone lines at all? Uh, well, I would, I would say maybe the Wall or? Street, maybe Wall Street firms to uh, take their calls, but I'm not sure that they're monitored. You know, it's, uh, it's difficult to know. Certainly, I don't know if they were taped. Mm. Clearly, Gretchen, there is a great deal at stake here, not just for Henry Paulson, whom your story focuses on, his actions, the decisions that he made, and ultimately uh, raises questions uh, about his legacy. Obviously, a Treasury Secretary who uh, had a great deal to confront and uh, had to respond accordingly, but it also raises some questions about Goldman Sachs and fans those fears that maybe Goldman is getting a bit too much of a helping hand in Washington. What's your feeling on that subject? Well, I think that Goldman has a reputation of being, you know, the best and the brightest on Wall Street, and so perhaps it's not uncommon for a lot of their employees to end up on Wall Street. I think they have a feeling about public service at the firm, but, you know, there is this um, concern, I think, among a, a wide array, certainly a lot of my readers, that say, gosh, there are a lot of smart people at a lot of different places, so, you know, it does seem to be, um, you know, very heavily Goldman-oriented sometimes. Okay, uh, we're out of time, but uh, in fact, no, Gretchen, you're going to stick with us right after this break, though, but we're going to talk more about Goldman and uh, what you found out. And Eric, you stick around as well. So Gretchen Morganson of the New York Times. And coming up, do we have time for the music? Recognize this voice?